Hey there, welcome back to another review. This time of a movie that I honestly wasn't really looking forward to, but I was somewhat curious about because it starred Amy Schumer, an, act an actress and a comedian that I've 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 enjoyed a lot of her work. I enjoy her stand up. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, quite a few of her skits on her show on Comedy Central, Inside Amy Schumer. So when I heard about heard that she was having her own film called Trainwreck, I was somewhat interested in the film and, you know, with the supporting cast as well. I mean, like Colin Quinn, who I've always been a big fan of from SNL and a few other things. And um, the main reason why I was kind of avoiding it is because it's technically a rom-com and that's not really the genre that I really like. But I... Uh, was curious about it and so I checked it out recently because I found a link for it and I was pleasantly surprised by this film. I thought this was one of the better rom-coms I've seen in a long time. I also thought it was one of Judd Apatow's better films, uh, especially a big step up uh, from crap like funny people, which is not funny at all. This is actually pretty funny. There were quite a few moments where I laughed my ass off and i probably say I laughed the hard, hardest at this than I did with any other comedy that I've seen this year. And that includes comedies like Get Hard, for instance. And this is, this is really, I thought this was a really funny, uh, heartwarming, uh, well-acted, well-performed, uh, well-directed movie. It, it had a great cast. You have Amy Schumer, who plays this, this, woman who I thought was really refreshing to see this type of character in this type of movie. She was not afraid to basically show herself in not the most flattering light. Uh, she wasn't perfect. She wasn't a cookie cutter character. She had problems and she w was a train wreck and she was a bitch to her sister and she really didn't handle her life the best that she really could and you know she was just drinking and smoking and yeah she was a train wreck and uh, but she had a sense of humor about it and uh, most importantly humility near the end which really I thought showed uh, Amy's range acting wise especially in a scene where she's a spoiler at or her dad's funeral and she pretty much she's talking about how much she misses him and how much he meant to her and I actually thought it was a really good performance by her for the most part I don't really think it was that bad um, I've seen worse from stand-up comedians in their first film Kevin Hart comes to mind uh, Amy Schumer is a lot better than Kevin Hart and it's not even close in my opinion but um there were some problems with supporting cast, which I'll get to, but uh, Amy Schumer, she plays a character named Amy Townsend, and uh, she pretty much, at a young age, her father's trying to tell her, her father played by uh, Colin Quinn, who plays Gordon, he's trying to tell her that monogamy isn't realistic, because he's telling her and her younger sister when she was nine about why he's leaving their mother and he creates this sort of um, this this ideal that's in Amy's head ever since she was a little girl that monogamy isn't realistic and that it's okay to sleep with whoever whenever even if you're in a relationship and so she took that to heart and then has become a, you know she sleeps with other men even when she's dating uh, so she could be dating one guy but then she sleeps with other guys so um, there's no commitment there and uh, what's an interesting bit of casting she's dating John Cena no I mean, not John Cena playing himself but John Cena plays a character named Steven and John Cena surprised me in this role he was really I think it was really funny because he was really willing to commit to this role which really had a lot of self-deprecation to it 
this is a role where John Cena pretty much has to make an ass out of himself. And he did it. And he did it really well. Some of the funniest sequences in the film are with John Cena. There's a scene where she, uh, Amy Schumer's trying to get him to talk dirty to her. And he just can't do it. And he just it's, it's so awkward. And it's so hilarious because of how awkward it is. Because John Cena's trying to talk dirty. And he's talking about, I'm going to put my protein shake in you. And she's like, ew! And like this is green, you know, this green shake. He's like, oh god, just stop, just talk dirty to me. <laughs> so so he just, he can't do it. He cannot do it. And then they go to a movie, and this scene is hilarious because they're 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 seeing this movie, and uh, Stephen is going to. The, and then this movie itself is a great satire, pretentious movies. It's called The Dog Walker, and it has Marissa Tomei and uh, Daniel Radcliffe in it. And they're saying ridiculous, pretentious lines like, I need help with my dog. I can see that. I would love to be the one to help you with your dog. What's your technique? I put them on a leash and walk them. You talk a big game. That's because I walk a big dog. <laughs> and, and it's black and white, and it's just, it's a great satire of these pretentious art house films. And so, they're watching this movie, The Dog Walker, and Amy is drunk, and Steven's talking to her, he's like whispering to her, he's like, Amy, is that wine in a box? Mm-hmm, I have red too. And then there's a guy in the back of the theater, and he's like, what the fuck? Is this guy ever gonna shut up? And Amy drunkenly says, please watch the movie. Steven's like, please stop. No, it's not right. Don't do this to me. Why is he yelling? Listen. And Steven's like, listen, you always do this to me. You show up to these places. You put me in a situation. I'm a big guy. Everyone wants to fight the big guy. And he's like, yeah, you are. And the guy in the back of the theater keeps talking. He's like, hey, Mark Wahlberg, shut your bitch up. Mar Mark Wahlberg? Me? The guy in the back of the theater. Who else looks like Mark Wahlberg, your girl? Mark Wahlberg is like 150 pounds. I'm 250 lean. I look like Mark Wahlberg ate Mark Wahlberg. Guy in the back of the theater. Your muscles aren't the fucking problem. It's your yapping girlfriend. Amy's like, just say fuck you. And he seems like, I will fuck you. All right? I will enter you. And the guy's like, y y you're going to enter me? Did you hear what he said? And then Amy's like, what are you talking about right now? And Steven's like, I'm just trying to int intimidate him. And Amy's like, you're just talking about raping him. And the guy at the back of the theater, you're not about that life, champ. I can see it. Steven's like, oh, I am about that life. No, 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 no. I will get crazy up in here. You like my movies? You like movies? Not his movies. Like, you like movies? We'll make a movie. We'll make Mama said knock you out. Star my fist in your dick hole. <laughs> The guy in the back of the theater is like, oh shit, what the fuck is wrong with this dude? And the woman in the back of the theater is like, he wants you. And Amy's like, babe, your threats, I'm telling you, they're super gay. Steven's like, sexual? And then it just continues. And then the guy in the back of the theater is still getting at him. He's like, this has to be the corniest muscle white dude I've ever seen in my fucking life. It's like, okay, Coco, Coco beware. You know what? You're being an asshole. Alright? You know what I do with assholes? I lick them. <laughs> oh, man. I just, I just, seen it made me laugh. That was fucking hilarious. And uh, there's other times where he called him Tone Loke. And I love the thing where he says, the, the, the guy in the back of the theater, he's like, you're not about that life. And I'm like, because I am a big fan of this YouTuber named Scooter Magruder. And he does these videos where he talks about not about that life, about things that are just, things that, are really ridiculous in life and things that you're really not uh, all for so to speak and and that and I was like hey he actually you know reminded me of Scooter and uh, yeah it was just it just came out of, out of nowhere I thought John Cena was actually pretty funny in this um, he's not in the film uh, much he's in the film from the beginning and then that's pretty much about it um, because then it follows the relationship 
building between Amy Schumer and Bill Hader, who plays this doctor named Dr. Aaron Connors, who is this, uh, he's an orthopedic surgeon for, for athletes. And he's uh, planning on doing this experimental knee surgery uh, on Amari Stoudemire, who is a player for the New York Knicks basketball team. This film also has a lot of sports cameos. LeBron James is in it. Uh, they kind of portray him as an asshole. They really do. He, he comes across as an asshole. He comes across as an entitled asshole in this movie. I, I, don't, I guess that must have been the point. But it does not paint LeBron in a good light at all. He just comes across as either clueless or an asshole. At least that's how I interpreted it. There's also other cameos from other, other uh, sports players. Uh, specifically, one in particular that really surprised me, Tony Romo, uh, the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, my favorite football team, my favorite NFL team. And I, I think it's kind of sad irony in a way that his season has become a train wreck. He was in Train Wreck, a movie that came out this year, and his season is the train wreck right now. Dallas is two and five, and Romo has been sidelined with a broken collarbone. He's supposed to come back in I think a couple weeks. But yeah. His season so far has been a train wreck. But it's not because of the movie. It's just it's just a little bit of a sad irony, the fact that he was in a film called Train Wreck in, in the same year where his season is technically a train wreck right now. So, um, I hate to admit that as a Cowboys fan, but I have to. And there's also other cameos uh, for like Marv Albert. In a, in a, there's like three people in a cameo. It was pretty funny. An intervention near the end where uh, LeBron James calls for an intervention. Uh, for Dr. Con Dr. Connors, and he he gets uh, Marv Albert, Chris Everett, the uh, tennis player, the female tennis player, and uh, this this one this is the most surprising cameo of all for me, other than Tony Romo. Matthew Broderick, <laughs> there's a Matthew Broderick has a cameo in this movie, so Matthew Broderick has a cameo role in that sequence and uh, there's there's a lot of different uh, yeah so because um, he plays himself Chris Everett plays herself Marv Albert plays herself uh, Tony Romo plays himself and Mari Stardemeyer plays himself Dave Attell is also in it as this uh, homeless guy on the side of the street who's pretty much insulting Amy calling her you know names and calling her trash and all that kind of basically calling her like it is you know like she is at that time um there's uh, also uh Brie Larson's in this and uh she plays uh Kim Townsend who is uh Amy's younger sister and uh, I thought she did I thought Brie did a great job she's the same actress who was in uh 21 Jump Street who and I really liked her in 21 Jump Street, she played uh, she played Molly in 21 Jump Street, and I thought she was fantastic in that role. So um, it was really nice to see her again in, in a film and get a pretty good role. She does a good job performance wise, and she's a likable character. And and uh, yeah, I I really liked her performance in this movie. And uh, so Brie Larson's there. You have Tilda Swinton, who plays Diana, who is this uh, the the bitchy boss of this uh, magazine that Amy Schumer writes for. She does a good job playing a bitch. I got I got to admit. And uh, you also have uh, Vanessa Bayer who plays Nikki. She doesn't. This character is completely useless. She's there for comic relief that isn't really that funny. Like there's a scene where she keeps smiling and uh, Deanna's like, "Stop smiling! Stop it! Stop doing that!" And she's like, Aah. "It's it's really not that funny." And then there's a stupid line you see in the trailer where just because uh, Dr. Connors calls Amy Schumer after they had a, a nice night out. And he thinks they might have something uh, there with their relationship and uh, to work with. She thinks like, oh, no, call the cops, you know. And I'm like, I, I, 
yeah, really, completely useless character. Didn't even need to be in the movie. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I can talk about in terms of the cast and in terms of the characters and stuff like that. The plot's pretty much, it's, it is what it is. It's a rom-com. Uh, Amy Schumer is a train wreck. She sleeps with the, with any man that she can find. She gets drunk, goes home with anybody. And uh, I like that aspect of the film a lot, actually, because it's, it's progressive in a lot of ways. With these type of films, they don't really touch upon that aspect. And, and they don't normally follow a, a woman who is this messed up either. So I thought that was refreshing in a lot of ways. And it's really nice. I really thought Amy Schumer did a great job. She was confident in herself. She was, uh, she's not the greatest looking woman. She's not doesn't have supermodel looks, but she's got a personality, and she's got a great sense of humor, and that goes a long, long way. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, it's pretty much, she's a train wreck, she works for this, uh, she gets, a uh, uh, hired to do this article with Dr. Connors, uh, Bill Hader, about his revolutionary knee surgery, because she opened up and said that she doesn't, she thinks sports suck. So the T so Diana gave her the the job even though she wasn't the one that came up with the idea and so ultimately she ends up falling for Bill Hader and then of course she had the typical falling out type stuff because she misinterprets something that was going on between uh, him her and Bill Hader she has no confidence in herself she doesn't believe that she she is meant to be with one man. And so she has commitment issues, and uh, then her dad dies, and then you have that drama, and then the fallout with her sister, and she loses her job, and uh, but then after that happens, she ends up uh, reconciling with her sister, and uh, then she realizes that she really misses Bill Hader, and she comes up with a really genius way to get him back, which I thought was really well, really well done, and a great way to end the movie. And it was a unique way to end the movie. And uh, she pretty much get, does a cheerleader routine for him. Because he's a sports doctor and he goes to a lot of sports games. And she does a cheer, cheerleader routine with the New York Knick, Knicks uh, cheerleaders. And uh, she's not the best dancer and she's not in good shape. But she keeps trying to do it anyway. And there's even a, a really hilarious scene where she tries to get on the trampoline and dunk a basketball. And, and, and Bill Hader's like, no, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do this. No, it's like, and she's like, yes. And there's even like in slow mo, and she jumps on the trampoline, and then just doesn't even get any air or any hang time, and just fucking face splits. <laughs> and then, and and then of course, they uh, kiss afterwards, and she turns out to be okay, and and. Uh, He's like, I've never seen that before. Like, you didn't even catch any air. You just fell. <laughs> and, and and then uh, they lived happily ever after, so to speak. I, and the end credits, uh, there's a Billy Joel song. And uh, I think it's a matter of time, which is, which is a classic song. And then throughout the whole movie, there's, there's, it has a lot of good songs in it. Good soundtrack. A good mix of stuff. A good mix of new and old music. And speaking of Billy Joel, I liked how uh, Dr. Connors' favorite song while he's doing surgery is uh, Uptown Girl, which is one of one of my personal favorite Billy Joel songs as well. So, so yeah, I really don't know what else to say about the film, except I found it to be pretty funny for the most part. There are some lines of dialogue, that, some some jokes that didn't really work, some that went on too long or... Or some that were just too on the nose for my tastes. But for the most part, there was a, a considerable amount of pretty uh, funny stuff. And there was also a really heartwarming love story there as well. And uh, between uh, Amy Schumer and Bill Hader. And I really liked seeing, I thought they had great chemistry together. And I thought it was a very uh, refreshing sight to see this type of couple in, in a movie like this. Because it was, I felt the film for the most part was handled really realistically for the most part, except for the stuff with the cheerleading stuff at the end. And, you know, they got to have some fun because it's a movie. But in terms of realism, I thought it was handled well with the fact that 
Amy Schumer is not some supermodel that is almost impossible for anyone to possibly catch, so to speak, to, to, to possibly be in their league. And Bill Hader isn't some the traditional supermodel, male supermodel archetype either. These are this is a couple that to me looks more realistic than male model number one and female super and a female supermodel number one. You know, number those two. It, I I just don't. It's not realistic to me. You see that a lot in movies like this, where you have the really unbelievably good-looking guy and an unbelievably good-looking woman, and then they have this romantic relationship, and that's where the rom-com stuff comes from. This felt more realistic to me. It felt more personal in ways, because this was not a relationship that was automatically... There was there were, there were questions on both sides. I thought the film did a great job showcasing uh, how both partners felt when the relationship was starting to fall apart. And also, eventually, you know, when they realized how much they loved each other. Of course, in this type of movie, it's pretty easy to be predictable. And, of course, I knew they were going to be together in the end, because that's what this type of movie is. But I definitely wasn't expecting Amy Schumer to do a cheerleading routine for him with Uptown Girl and other songs and, and anything like that. So, and I wasn't expecting uh, some of the humor... And I wasn't expecting, especially some of the stuff where after she breaks up with him, she gets up with one of her coworkers, and who's this intern, and he's a freak. This guy is fucked up, and he's and he's underage, and it's just it's just crazy. So that's actually actually a good way to sum up the film. It is crazy. It's a pretty crazy film. It's a pretty crazy movie about a a, a woman who is not completely perfect and uh, but she eventually ends up figuring out what's wrong with her life and does what she can to fix it and uh, falls in love with a guy in the process I mean it, that that's pretty much what train wreck is it's a it's a romantic comedy and I think it's one of the best ones I've seen in a long long time but that's just me personally uh, if this isn't your type of genre and you're not interested in the film and you're not a big fan of Amy Schumer, I don't recommend this movie. But if any of this sounds interesting to you, if if you like rom romantic comedies or if you're just like comedies, really, cause I think this is actually a pretty good comedy, not just a good romantic comedy for the most part. I think you might get a kick out of the film. Um, but pretty much only if you're curious. If you're curious about it, give it a look. If you're not, I, it, it's pro probably not going to be your cup of tea. But then again, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, I can't really speak for anyone else other than myself when it comes to uh, whether or not somebody would like a movie or not. But anyway, yeah, I really don't know what to say about the film. It's a, Except if it was a rate out of five stars, I would give it four Four. Four out of five. I thought it was paced pretty well for the most part. I thought the performances were really solid, except for a few supporting cast roles. Uh, the humor was more than uh, more times than not made me laugh my ass off. And uh, But there was a few times where it was just too too much or too over the top or too on the nose. But, um, yeah. I thought it was an enjoyable, fun movie. And I uh, thought it had a nice heart to it. And, and it, it surprised me. It really did. It was train wreck was not a train wreck. Anyway, thank you for watching my review, and I will see you guys later. See ya.